What does it mean to be the greatest? Is it being the most talented? TV coming in, Taker looking to make the play oh. against Ruler! Omer goes in! And again! Or being the most skilled? Oh, look at the class, look at the moves! Faker! Or the one that's the most accomplished? The greatest of all time will always be a debate in every sport because no one person's criteria will ever be the same as another. That is the case for every sport except for League of Legends. Because the League of Legends does have a GOAT and there is no question, no criteria, no debate. Faker. And there will never be anyone like him ever again. Lee Faker Sung Hyuk. Before he became the greatest of all time, he was a solo queue talent dominating the Korean server. His incredible mechanical display and his above average IQ for the game landed him a spot in the premier esports organization in Korea, SK Telecom. In their first competitive tournament, Faker immediately established himself as one of, if not, the best mid laner oh, Faker, in the world. Faker, baby, in trouble here, Deathmark tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the class, look at the moves! Faker, what was that? Faker with a huge what? play, the QSS. I can't believe the I just saw he that. He actually won that duel. I can't as believe SK that happened. Telecom I'm just charges mind. into the KT Bullets base. After multiple impressive performances domestically that culminated in an LCK MVP award, Faker headed to his first League of Legends World Championship. Although SKT were the last seed to qualify from Korea, they entered the tournament as the favorite, and boy, did they live up to those expectations. None more so than Faker himself. En route to their first World Championship trophy as an organization, Faker routed the competition making plays we had never seen before from a player. It was absolutely clear to anyone watching that this guy was different than everyone else. He was someone special. From OMG. And Cool gets turned again! The max range charm, the lockup, the knockdown, the takedown. Bengi gets the kill there. Not going in! Way too close. The exhaust is there, but it's not going to be enough. They are gonna fall one after the other in the I think I can no! mentality, but I think I can. They really can. <laughs> All aboard the Korean hype train, SK Telecom T1. Now, did the newly crowned champions rest on their laurels? Nope. They went undefeated in Champions Winter and sweeped the finals against Samsung Ozone. As for Faker, he took home yet another LCK MVP award and had established himself already as arguably the greatest player of all time. But even he quickly realized that it took more than individual talents to succeed at the highest level. Although the team dominated international competition at All Stars 2014, domestically they struggled. Faker maintained his high level of play but the rest of the team faltered. Not only did SKT not defend the world's title in 2014, they didn't even qualify for the tournament. This year was the beginning of something new for Faker and the Korean LOL scene. No more sister teams. And of course, the Korean exodus. With so many great players leaving the region and so many teams being forced to merge, there was a serious concern about the region's international competitiveness. Better, uh, Frost Queen's flame uses by uh, Wolf there too. Just yet another great play by Oh, he, oh, it. he got it! How in the world did he get that pentakill? <laughs> wow, that was really on the edge as far as time goes, but Faker's like, no, you know what? I want it, and Faker gets the first pentakill of Champion Spring. And the Nexus goes down, SKT takes it, GG! Wow. MSI 2015, the first of its kind. SKT entered the tournament as the name to beat, and they demonstrated why early on. They ended the group stage with a perfect 5-0 record, but things got shaky quickly. A few solo kills on Faker, something unheard of at the time, and suddenly it wasn't so clear that SKT was a lock to win. They escaped past Fnatic to face off against China's ADG. ADG took a 2-1 lead over SKT, but more crucially than anything, it was while Faker was on the bench with substitute Easyhoon playing in his place. Facing elimination, the team turned to the GOAT for inspiration in Game 4, and he delivered. Faker locked in LeBlanc, his signature champion undefeated up to that point, a champ no team considered given to him. But EDG had a plan.
they locked in Morgana mid. The perfect pick designed to counter Faker himself. In the final game, EDG effectively admitted, Faker, you are the best. We acknowledge that with this pick. But if you can't beat us, we don't think your team can. And they were right. LPL's Edward Gaming are the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational Champions! For the first time, Faker and his team was defeated in an international best of five. Many would argue that Faker's absence in the first three games cost the team a chance to win the series. They would not make the same mistake twice. Faker was originally benched for his inability to play key meta champions like Azir as well as his counterpart, so he worked tirelessly until he was an expert on them. Not only that, he innovated the meta even further with never before seen and picks like Master Yi. Faker can play anything. Wow, it's Master Yi. Faker? I can't, that's gotta be Faker playing the Master Yi. The man who needed no other motivation had an intense fire lit under him. Worlds was next. After missing the previous year's competition and losing at MSI, SKT was on a mission. They completely gapped the competition, going undefeated in groups, sweeping AHQ, sweeping Origin, and dropping only a single game to the Koo Tigers in the finals. One loss in the entire tournament. That is what I meant to be unkillable. Fitting for the unkillable Demon King himself, Faker. As if he needed any more validation, he was also awarded Kespa's League of Legends Best Player of the Year award. Despite a rocky start to the 2016 season, the team bounced back hard with a victory at IEM Ketowice and following that with another domestic title. It seemed that as much as things changed for the org, winning was always a constant. After adding his fifth LCK title to his already overflowing trophy case, he went on to MSI 2016 with hopes of righting the wrong of the previous year. SKT and Faker looked vulnerable in the group stage. They barely squeaked by into the bottom half of the playoffs bracket. The thing is, it's one thing to beat Faker in a best of one, it's another to beat him in a best of five. The team regained their form, beating RNG 3-1 in the semis. And in the finals, Faker once again rose to the occasion as he always did. He lifted his first MSI trophy along with the MVP. Returning to Korea, the team's newfound form was in full stride, but only for a little while. Their loss to KT Rolster was heartbreaking. They're on the Nexus! They're on the Nexus and KT Rolster! They're gonna do it! They take down SK Telecom in the reverse sweep! SKT headed into Worlds as the second seed from Korea. But perhaps more shocking was the fact for the first time Faker was not ranked the best player in the world heading into the World Championship. From the moment he entered the professional law scene, he was always the best, unquestionably the best. The fact that anyone could rank another player ahead of Faker was unheard of. And although he didn't show it on his face, you could tell from his play that he took that person. The team found themselves matched up against the supposed best player in the world, Smeb. And in that high pressure scenario, Faker shined brighter, making key play. SKT, shot wave, wave, a shot after key play. Control the bottom side of this map. Ooh, Shockwave's gonna land it. all the damage they need! Against the wall! Bangi himself! 3-0 against Rox Tigers in the series, and SKT punched their ticket to their third world final! And in the finals, Samsung Galaxy put up in an admirable fight. But Faker was not going to be denied. His impressive individual prowess was on full display. He became a three-time world champion and won his second title in a row. He also took home his first world's MVP trophy as well. And won Kespa's Best Player of the Year award for the second time. Looking at his achievements in that year, it was his best year yet. And Faker entered a new echelon, the Michael Jordan of esports. Faker, fresh off of signing a new contract with SKT, was in peak form, running through the LCK to yet another title. MSI was no different. 
It had come to a point where everyone in the world realized there was nothing you could do with Faker. Every international tournament had become who's coming in second place, and the debate for the greatest was already over. It was more of a question of who was the second best player of all time. It had become so easy, so expected, which is what made the fall from grace that much more brutal. At 2017 World, SKT was pushed to the brink more than they'd ever had been before. They were pushed to five games by Misfits in the quarterfinals, and in the semifinals they again found themselves down 2-1. Suddenly, the thought of losing started to creep in, but Faker would not allow it. The flash, the flash, the chase for Faker, they have the damage, knocks him back up, one more shot on Duel Man, doesn't need any villain shots to Duel Man, and who did it go 0 2? Here comes Faker, he's gonna knock him back to Lexi, and that's gonna be spike for Shahu. Flashing away, hitting the blue for a bit of boost speed, but his health bar is running low, and Faker will shut him down. And Masters of Control will take down the Nexus, will take down RNG, and are headed to their fourth World Championship final. You never profess the death of SKT at Worlds until you... Faker put on arguably his greatest individual carry performance ever at 2017 Worlds, simply refusing to lose, and found himself fighting for the Worlds trophy once again. Even if SKT wasn't as great as they were in years past, Faker was inevitable. There was nothing you could do to stop him. Except for... Picking Malzar. You can see the flash old lips. They've caught Faker. They've got the CC. The mid laner is down. The unkillable Demon King has the killed. come through. The SKT dynasty is over. All hail the new kings. Samsung Galaxy. Your 2017 world champion. Samsung ended SKT's undefeated streak at Worlds in the worst way possible. In the finals. With a 3 0 sweep. It broke Faker. Things only got worse from there. The team went into a rebuild, attempting to build around Faker once more, but with little success. And it was the first time you could legitimately say that there were other players in the world better than Faker. After another disappointing conclusion to the season, the team revamped around Faker, this time acquiring some of the biggest names in the LCK. They steamrolled through the region finishing in second to the rookie sensation Griffin. But in the playoffs, it was the veterans on SKT who schooled the new kids on the block. Faker in particular, who was largely playing second fiddle to the multitude of stars on his team, outperformed the young mid lane prodigy in the finals. So came MSI, the team's first international tournament together, and there were plenty of strong contenders. But this was Faker after all. And now he had a squad. No weak links this time to exploit. You couldn't just ban him out or counterpick him. You had to beat him head on, which very few in the history of the game had ever done. Until G2 did it. G2 Esports eliminates SK Telecom! North America face Europe at the MSI Finals! Being eliminated by a European team at the semi final stage of the tournament was a huge blow. The team did secure one trophy though, winning Rift Rivals 2019. With that, Faker had assembled the Affinity Gauntlet. He had won every single major tournament one could win in League of Legends esports. However, they finished the season in fourth place. It had come to this for Faker. From being a perennial international victor, to losing in the finals, to struggling to even win domestically. But as mentioned before, when the moment called for it, Faker led the way. Not with incredible stats, but by facilitating stars Khan and Clit. Doesn't have a health bar. In goes Effort. Gonna uh -oh. charge up everybody. And what a way to end the game. SKT gonna squeeze Griffin here in the dumpster. And they are going. And then, the perfect opportunity for revenge. World semis. G2 vs SKT, Faker vs the man they call Baby Faker, Caps. And there was no question who rose to the occasion that day. And it wasn't Faker. Despite the gold leads and barren takes, it was SKT running around fighting for scraps. And Faker, for all his legendary clutchness, couldn't make much of an impact at all. 
His one chance at glory even cost the team dear. Baker is no! Baker is dead! What was that? This is it! The greatest team in the history of League of Legends taken down by the greatest team Europe has ever produced! The name fans around the world had grown so fond of or so fearful of changed. SKT became T1. Perhaps that was the change the Oregon Faker himself needed. On March 5th, 2020, during the 2020 LCK season, Faker became the first player to secure 2,000 kills in the LCK. In April 2020, he surpassed the score for the most games in the LCK, reaching a total of 545. He went on to 3-0 Genji in the final of the spring to secure his ninth LCK championship, but he only managed to make the LCK third pro team. With another disappointing finish in the summer, leading to another Miss Worlds opportunity, the question started to loom, has the game passed Faker by, and will he ever then be the best again? After benching himself at the start of the spring split for three weeks, those questions became even more damning. For a player so used to being the best, competing for the title of the best, now he was the one holding his teammates back. But now, surrounded by so many young faces, he wanted to set the right example of what it takes to be great. For the first time, he won the LCK's Most Improved Player Award. Although the team didn't walk away with the world's trophy, for the first time in a long time, T1 showed life. They showed promise. Faker had a great world's performance himself up until a more pedestrian semi-final performance against Showmaker. If they were to win another title, the team would need more experience, and Faker would need to go back to being a playmaker in those big crucial games. Despite rumors of a $20 million offer from a team in China, Faker resigned with T1. His priority was to winning, and he felt T1 gave him the best chance to do so. In his 10th season, he became the first player in the LCK to reach 2,500 kills. Will go down T1, an absolutely historical moment. 18 and 0 for the first time in the LCK, and they tie 2015 Summer SKT and Darm 1 2020 Summer. Two teams that then went on to win Worlds at plus 29 points in the season. Unprecedented. Baker's performance earned him a place on the LCK's first All-Pro team, an accolade he had not received since 2020. Baker was back where he belonged. Ten years after his debut, he could still be the best in the world. All that was left was to prove it on the biggest stages, like he used to do all the time. They will look to win MSI. Xiaohu the Little Tiger has roared into life. The LPL continue their era of dominance and they are leaving no one alive. It's RNG's world and we're just living in it. RNG's defeat of T1 was devastating. Back in the LCK, Faker continued setting records, becoming the first player to achieve 500 wins. The team was nonetheless defeated by Genji in the finals, but they remained focused on their ultimate goal. Winning worlds would wash away everything. And they dominated. Faker dominated. He became the first player to participate in 100 games at the World Championship. Additionally, he surpassed Uzi for the most kills at Worlds, accumulating over 350. He was in peak form as the team roared into the finals as the overwhelming favorite. After an explosive Game 1 victory, it seemed as good as over. And again, he was denied. Again, Faker was not the Faker he was throughout the tournament in that final series. It was Zekka on the other side of the rift that was making the game-winning, show-stopping clutch plays that we expected out of Faker. Perhaps Faker's greatest skill beyond his mechanics, his leadership, or his clutchness is his attitude. It's that discipline and obsessive passion for the game that allowed him to be so good for so long. It's what allowed him to have one of the best spring splits he's had in a while. Ahead of all these youngsters who had supposedly passed him by. And so came the toughest test yet. 
MSI. It was them versus China's number one seed, a super team comprised of some of the best players in the world in every position. The series was a nail-biter, particularly in Game 2 and 3 where the clutch team fights from T1 instantly ended the game. But when facing another Game 5, Final of MSI 2023! And that's T1 falls to the lower bracket, JDG! Why couldn't they get over the hump? And as those questions loomed, things only got worse. Faker was forced to sit on the sideline for multiple weeks due to a serious injury to his wrist. T1 went from 6-2 to 7-9 without Faker, threatening to miss the playoffs altogether. It did, however, help build Faker's legend more as it showed just how vital he was to the team's success. Even if he wasn't the best player in the world anymore, he was arguably still the most valuable. With Faker back in the lineup, the team surged in the playoffs, even taking down top-seeded KT twice in two five-game series. Although they were once again outmatched by Genji in the finals, considering Faker's mid-season absence and slow journey to recovery, fans were understanding of the result. After all, both the fans and the players had a bigger focus in mind. Worlds. Worlds 2023. The narrative was the Golden Road. JDG had won every major tournament there was to win in LOL Esports in a calendar year. All that was left was Worlds. No one had ever done it before, but T1 and Faker announced that they would be the ones to stop it. As the remaining LCK teams fell by the wayside, the only hope for Korea was T1 and Faker. And on his home soil, Faker ascended to a new level. Ready to set up. Scout on the flank, however, gonna look for the shove. He's gonna manage to catch only Zeus in the meantime. Faker still standing strong. Shockwave getting good damage down. T1 quick to force the fight. Sick of Zeus over the wall. Zeus on the back line. But Gala down forced to safety. Shock from stacked. Zeus can't find the angle, but the shutdown coming through for Faker. T1 taking the fight anyway. Galilee standing. The last light of the LTK burns bright. And Busan. To the Next was their ultimate test, JDG. But this time, Faker reminded the world exactly why he is the one and only Demon King. It is very tough not to have the cleanse. Zeus on the flank, Zeus on the side. TP coming in, Faker looking to make the flank oh. against Ruler! Odor oh, goes in! And again, the combos are clean! The hostile takeover is damn well! Faker Faker Playmaker was reborn. In this series, you saw the mechanics, the playmaking, the leadership, and the clutchness. You saw everything that makes Faker the best. And you saw why, no matter what people say about Chovy or Knight or whoever else, none of them have yet to show that they can reach a level of play as high as Faker when Faker's at his best. And after that, it was all but inevitable. T1 will be your 2023 world champions! It took them two years to win. He hoisted the trophy for the first time since 2016. To think, all of those years without winning, from going from the best to less than, going from the clutchest player to arguably a choker, to rebuilding and reinventing his style to prop up his teammates, and to finally winning his fourth world championship. He may not have won the MVP of the series, but he showed the world that there are levels to this. And even now, when Faker's at his best, there's no one on his level. And that's why there will never be anyone like Faker again.